Oh, yes, 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 yes. Greetings to you once again, my brothers and my sisters in Christ Jesus. I greet you in that name that is above every other name. At the name of Jesus Christ, every knee bows, every tongue confesses. Because He, the Lord Jesus, is above it all. And He is the one. And in Him we live and we move and we have our being. How you doing out there? How goes it amidst all that takes place on the earth at such a time as this? Um, I'm giving this this a try again, another drive time, different different setup. We'll see how this whole thing sounds afterwards. But I got to take the chances and the times and the opportunities to connect with you guys out there because there is so much going on right now and we have to take the opportunities when we get them to come together. <clears throat> we have to get take the opportunities where we have them to speak the truth to encourage each other in that which is real to um, carry on and to persist in the things that God is giving us to do and to encourage one another in that because in all that takes place right now you know this is a crucial time you guys and this is not a time to um, this is not a time to lose heart this is not a time to, to mistake or misunderstand the way that God works. Because everything that he's given you up until now that you've been walking with and moving with is, has been consistent and true if you've been living with it. If you've been living the interpretations of the words of Christ, you know um, <clears throat> that which is real. If you've been living the interpretation of the words of Christ, you have been experiencing the blessing and the power and the purpose and the, uh, the amazing journey that God has for you. But that, my friends, has just been that first stage and we're transitioning. <clears throat> we're transitioning because that which, because God is moving, you know, not because we're moving, you know, we've been carrying on and consistently doing this. But when God moves, everything changes. When God, when God speaks, everything changes. When God decides to transition anything, all of that, um, all, all the base reality, everything shifts. You know, one of the reasons why people are, are struggling to figure out, well, what's going on right now? Well, <laughs> what's going on is that God is, has been moving. And as he has, has <clears throat> stepped in and is pouring out his spirit upon all flesh, there's creating a wave of light in the spirit and it's continuing to go on and to persist and to all, all is, is in flux. Now, the worlders fall apart because their thing is as much as possible about control and to be able to create uh, a paradigm that they can now predict. You know, you it, the, the world needs to be able to predict. If it can't predict, it can't sell you something, can't market you something, it can't, it can't plan. But, you know, with... The children of God, they are like the wind. They flow to and fro wherever the Spirit of God leads and guides them. That's just the way that we are. So, you know, I, there, there is, there is a, a shift because God is also making things known unto His people, unto His true ecclesia, His true church, the, those that truly follow Him and worship Him in spirit and in truth. He's making things known to us that were previously completely um, off limits. You know, we, it, you know, God talked about certain things being sealed up unto the end. That's what He told John. He said, "Look, seal it up until the end." You know, or just don't write that down, mind you. Sorry, He told that to Daniel. Seal it up unto the end. So you've got Daniel <laughs> being instructed um, to to seal that up, to go his way, take his rest. You've got John being told, don't write that down. And you've got things that will be revealed to the children of God in this time that have been previously unknown, previously withheld, previously beyond the scope of human ability, human understanding, 
human interaction because God is moving and God is making things known. God is the one that is at work. Now, when God starts to open things up and God starts to build an understanding, that, see, okay, he's, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, right? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of all knowledge, all understanding. It's got to come, it comes from him. And so that is, if you don't have that, you don't have the starting point. If you don't have that, you don't have a beginning place from which to move forward. Now, the world can have all kinds of information. See, that's that's what the world does. They try to do a substitute for, for true wisdom, true knowledge, true understanding. What they try to do is the collective uh, compiling of information. And then they want to default the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding piece to machines. Get machines to make those tough decisions and those tough choices and to interpret it. That's their answer for that which comes from God. That's their answer for the way that, that God would do things. But, you know, in the middle of all of this, it's amazing because all God has to do is just say one word and everything shifts. All God has to do is, is toss one thing in the mix. You remember with Pharaoh in Egypt when he was pursuing uh, the, the children of Israel? And they were trying to follow them across the Red Sea. And all of a sudden, what happened? Well, one thing shifted. The Red Sea, that was solid, dry ground for the children of Israel, became, um, be just, it started to become real, real, the, the, the wheels got stuck, started to fall off in there. They stuck. He, he got them stuck in the very place that served the children of Israel. And then when the water, when God told Moses, okay, let the water, you know, drop your hands now, they ended up being drowned in the Red Sea. The horse and rider drowned in the sea where the same place where the children of God were able to walk by. Why? Because if God turns his back on you, if, if you know, the scriptures, when the scriptures say, if God be for us, who, who can be against us? Well, the other side of that too is if God be against you, who can help you? You know, if God be against you, who can help you? You know, it is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. So, if God be against you, who can be for you? And I tell you what, there's people that God is against. There are people that God is against. And because they've aligned themselves with that which is Antichrist. So they've chosen, they've used their free will to put themselves in that spot. And by doing so, they have put themselves against God. So they've made God their enemy. So, okay. You know, now God loves his enemies, but boy, he's going to still wipe them out. You know, you get that, you get a, a window and an opportunity to repent. If he's gracious and merciful to give you that. But if you don't get that, there's no, where else are you going to go? What else do you have to look forward to? What else can you possibly anticipate besides your own complete and total destruction? So, ha, all right. So, now, you know, as I was, uh, I was listening to my buddy Zeph talking a little bit earlier today, um, I always appreciate uh, the word that comes through him and the way that God has been always using him in this space, in this paradigm. And, uh, you know, he was speaking about <clears throat> um, something that God's been speaking to me about. Now, he was speaking about it in terms of uh, a dream where he lost his keys. And, you know, it's been interesting because something God's been speaking to me about has been the keys. <sighs> you know, I, there are keys, brothers and sisters, keys to accessing and to, to moving through and to being who God made you to be and to accessing your birthright as a child of the living God in this paradigm. See, here's the thing. You, all right, what does the scriptures tell us? The scriptures tell us that we are seated in heavenly places, right? Okay, so you're seated in heavenly places. What does that mean? 
Well, if you're seated in heavenly places, then who, what is this primary consciousness here? Okay, so this primary consciousness that you're in here is a projection of true reality. It's not real because none of us stay in this reality. You know, we know there's not a soul that came into this world that stays in this world. So, so that which is is your experience here, you're you're a projection of your higher self. You are a projection of your higher self here on this earth at such a time, quote unquote, such a time as this. You are a projection of your higher self. So now, that being the case and that being the truth, then, okay, well, well, what manifestation, what configuration is your projection here? Because that is a higher dimension, right? The projection of spirit from which we are here in this realm, that is a higher dimension. You struggling with this one? Okay. Christ Jesus, the Word made flesh. He came onto the earth, into the earth, as a projection of who He is. He is I am. So God said, okay, all right, here's the Word made flesh. And He came to the earth. That was a projection um, into this reality, a physical manifestation of that which was from the realm of the spirit. Did he stay in this world in that form? No. You know, he came, did what God had for him to do, and left. And he says, better for you that I go, because when I go, I'm going to send my spirit. He's going to be with you. He's going to be in you. He's going to teach you, lead you, guide you into all truth. Okay, so now, you and I are projections of the truth. You and I are projections on this realm in such a time as this of who we are in the realm of the Spirit. So, now, what manifestation are we while we're here? And how do we access and tap into the true reality of who we are, our higher self? That space that is that is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Well, okay, first first one, first key is Jesus Christ. <laughs> first, because the keys, right? Okay, well, first key is Christ Jesus, the hope of glory. Christ Jesus, I am. Okay, there's a there's another part of the key. I am. Well, he's you know you got to be present because God is right now. This is this is your moment. This right now is it. You know, Christ in you, the hope of glory. When you start to, to transition out of this three-dimensional space and you start to move into a higher dimension, well, in a higher dimension, there is no time. In fact, in this reality, there is no time because in this reality, here... Um, we're just in loops because all time exists all the time you know that's sometimes when people see things prophetically you know all they're doing is just jumping forward into that which has already happened they're just seeing a loop of that which has already happened now you can switch between different places in this whole thing as well you can <clears throat> tap into who you are in another expression of that. Um, <laughs> okay. All right. Let me, let me explain that one a little bit more. Um, <clears throat> okay. Well, when people say, uh, talk about their, their, their salvation experience, for example, somebody will be going down a particular track in their life and as they're going down that particular track, and then all of a sudden, one day, the revelation, Christ in you, the hope of glory, the revelation, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. 
And all of a sudden, everything changed. Well, before that, they were in a particular loop. They were in a particular configuration. They were going, 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 going. And if nothing changed in that spot, if nothing changed, they would have continued on doing that forever. Peter would still be, would still have been going out in the fishing boat all the time. Nothing would have changed. But then he met Jesus. Jesus is a key. He's the first key of the keys. And in that key, and in that all of a sudden, what did it do? It unlocked an entirely different loop of reality. And everything changed. You know, I'm going to make you fishers of men. All of a sudden, everything changed. All of a sudden, Peter got the chance to see who he was and who he would be in a totally different configuration. A totally different reality loop. A totally different... He's a new man, a new creation. The world... Now, why does the world want to hide these keys from you? Because if they hide the keys from you, you're going to stay in the wheel and go around and around and around in this harvesting configuration where they can suck the soul out of you and suck the life out of you, drain you of your gifts, drain you of that which God has put in you. That's the goal of the world system. And so if you bow down to the world and the world system and you become a slave to that thing and they give you some trinkets, well, but they get your soul. So they give you something temporal and temporary for that which is eternal. So it's not a very good deal in the eternal sense. But for people that, you know, they perish for lack of knowledge, they don't know what they're giving up. They don't know what they're letting go of. They don't know the eternal consequence of their choice and their action. They go with that. And the world offers them, you know, will offer you all the way up to all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. Because they don't want to lose souls. Now, that's what they did with Jesus. I usually, people sell out for much less. You know, in the world, they sell out for much less. The devil doesn't have to take the offer that high. For the follower of Christ, you've been given the keys, my brothers and sisters of the living God. You've been given the keys to be able to go to and fro, to access the higher dimensions, to move forward in the things of the living God. You've been given the keys to be able to also even shift between loops of now to the world or to somebody looking from a temporal mindset. All they're going to see is you, uh, they're just going to see a timeline. Because that's the only way that they can see. They're stuck. But for the transition, for the child of God, you shift from glory to glory, from strength to strength. You move in the reality that God has for you. So you, you are a present manifestation of who you are. You're an accumulation of a manifestation of who you are right now. So as you move forward in that which God puts in you, you, you're going to see the manifestation. Now, God would have for you to use the keys that are there. Um... (laughs) I can, yeah, you want to know some more of these. I, I'm, st- I'm still studying this thing out, all right? Um, and God's still showing me this piece by piece. But there's something to uh, the breath. I'll tell you that one too. There's something there. There's a key there. Um, you know, it is, it is Jesus breathed on them. God, there's a lot to do with our breath. The very breath in your body is on loan from God. Um <clears throat> He puts this, it's, it's just, there's something there. You know, what that is and, and how that works and how that can allow you to, to access a different state 
to access a different state of being. Now, also too, let, uh, you know, let's let's talk a little bit about the states of beings and these loops. Okay, um, you have know, talked before about you know ocean examples. Well, if you've got a wave that's coming to crash on the ocean shore, and you've got somebody that's a surfer. Okay, well, one guy could be riding the wave. One guy could be inside the break and getting pummeled by that wave. And then somebody else could be um, on the, the shore, the shoreline, uh, watching this whole thing. And it's all the same wave. It's all in the same moment. It just depends on what position you're in. Are you watching it? Are you riding it? Are you being pummeled by it? It's all happening in that same moment. So you, my brother and sister in Christ, you're called to ride the wave. And the keys are given to the children of God so they can access their spiritual position, their spiritual destiny, so that they're able to be in the position that God wants them to be in for all that's in, on the horizon at such a time as this. It's an incredible thing. God, there's so much right now. I am, I'm excited for all of us for what God has taken us into the middle of. And I just want to encourage you guys. God bless you. God, we're praying for you. 20 on 20 is coming up pretty soon. Um, be in prayer. You know, all the little strange, crazy things and the witchcraft, all that kind of stuff. Hey, you've got the power in Jesus Christ to rebuke that, to send it back. In Jesus' name, I just do that right now for everybody listening and myself and, and everybody that I love and care about. In Jesus' name, we send it all back. And we just proclaim the blessing and the favor of God over all of us. Pray. Be in prayer. Trust God. Know that He's in control. Because God God has got this and He wants us to be on point. And just to be witnesses of the truth and what He's doing. We love you guys. God bless you. Drop us an email. Faithmix at gmail.com. You can say hi. We'd love to hear from you guys. And keep on keeping on. We'll catch up with you guys sometime really soon. So keep up. And uh, trust, because God is in control, and He knows exactly what He's doing. All right, we love you guys. God bless you. Bye. Well, greetings. Greetings once again, my brothers and my sisters in Christ Jesus. I greet you in that name that is above every other name. At the name of Jesus Christ, every knee bows, every tongue confesses, because He, the Lord Jesus Christ, is Lord. He's above it all. And in Him, we live, we move, we have our being, we continue on, we, we carry forward in the paradigm that God has us in at such a time as this. And, um, you know, I started talking a little bit yesterday about... Uh, <clears throat> I started talking a little bit yesterday about the keys. I started talking a little bit yesterday about um, this this paradigm that we're in, and also how God has established for us a way, a way out. He is Jesus is the way, right? He's not a way; he is the way. So, you know, there are there are these connections that God wants us to understand because in understanding them we can appropriate them and we can we can live them you know it's it's so the, the it is the person that lives the proper interpretation of the words of Christ that experiences the blessings of his words you know it's it's if if somebody you know, I've seen so often when I used to you know, go back to uh, church days and early, early, early things that were going on, and then I'm also thinking of how people used to twist and turn scriptures to try to match a predetermined agenda that they had, and in the process of trying to match a predetermined agenda, they would twist a scripture, they would twist a, um, something that God had said to have a. a <clears throat> a false meaning. Now, the words that God spoke were truth, were life, would be a blessing unto somebody, but the interpretation was self-serving, was full of corruption, was designed 
to take people in another path and in another way. That which was intended to give people life was twisted and turned by the gatekeepers in the institutions in order to, to keep people enslaved. And, uh, you know, that there's, there's, I mean, in the book of Timothy, God, you know, has put forward a, a very strict and stern warning. He says, you know, those of you that t preach and teach incur on yourselves a stricter judgment. So it's, uh, you know, listen, I don't do this lightly. You know, when God, when God uh, quickened me, you know, this was back when I was a teenager, um, but quickened me to, to speak, you know, I, I mean, I, cause I would, I'm in my natural self at that stage where I was at, you know, I, I would have been just fine being in the background, but when God quickened me to start speaking, the other thing that he, he told me was every time that I would stand up to speak for him, no matter what was going on in my life, he would speak through me, you know, his word would come through, and I needed to know that because, um, you know, I didn't want to go forward speaking something that was um, not coming from him. So, and, and the thing is, you can't do this without him in the first place. You can't, you, if you were to try to stand up and speak about um, the things of, of the Spirit and the things that God is revealing without his Spirit speaking through you, well, what is the source of that? You know, that's vanity, that's opinion. And, you know, frankly, our opinions don't count for much. It's, it's what you want is you want the revelation of Christ. You want the revelation that comes from God. That's the thing that, um, that is, is going to be life and truth and open things up for you. And the scriptures also tell us there's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So, therefore, you don't want <coughs> to um, be, especially in the things of the Spirit, doing things that seem right to you. You want to be doing things in line with truth. You want to be doing things in line with the revelation of God. His word, His truth, His power, His principles, His kingdom come, His will be done. That's what you want. Because without that, what, do you, what else do you have? You know, it, it, for some reason, I don't... I mean, yes, I, I know the enemy has set up all these traps and these snares, but you know, people look also too for the collective to give them assurance, collective assurance that they're okay, because they've all wanted to go another way, and a way that that seems right to them, and a way that's in line with their greeds and their lusts. Scriptures tell us that you know, in these days, the last days, that. People will surround themselves with teachers that tell them what their itching ears want to hear. So, that being the case, you know, they'll surround themselves with people that tell them what they want to hear, not what they need to hear, not what they should hear, not what, what will give them, you know, point them in the direction of the path of truth so they can make a decision and a choice and they can go with that. No, they're going to surround themselves with teachers that tell them what their itching ears want to hear and they're going to continue to go forward in that delusion and that deception with groupthink never truly being, um, you know, who they, who they were destined to be. So, <clears throat> that really is a shame to have been alive but to never have truly lived. To have been here the whole time and never truly have known an, an authentic, genuine expression of being who God made you to be. That really is a, 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 just an absolute shame. You know? I mean, it's it's the equivalent of somebody traveling to the most beautiful, I don't want to say these, the equivalent, but, you know, an example, somebody traveling to an amazing, just one of the most beautiful beaches in the world, but they spend all their time stuck inside a dingy, cost-saving room. Not even a nice room. 
just a cost-saving room that's just a place where they can sleep. But they never got outside the room. They spent the whole time there. <clears throat> they never experienced that place. They never experienced what it was that, that could have been there for them that whole time. So now God has given us, though, an option. You know, before Christ Jesus, you didn't have an option. Before Christ Jesus, you didn't have a way. You didn't have the way. You know, there's ideas. People hinted to things, hinted to possibilities. But there was, there was nothing that really stuck. There was nothing that really addressed that which was the, the elephant in the room. Occasionally, people would come up and, you know, they would allude to certain possibilities and certain thoughts. And some people would be, you know, because, yes, all life is suffering. Oh, okay, here we go. You know, this guy gets it because I'm suffering and you're suffering, right? Okay. Yeah, so they would allude to different things. But in the end, the only one, the only one that was the way out is Christ. The only one that has the keys to the door is Christ. You know, other people can talk about the door, but there's only one person that has the keys to the door. The keys to unlock and to move forward. To go from glory to glory, to go from strength to strength. There's only one. Because your human efforts to try to open those doors falls flat. You might as well take your human efforts and go try to, by, with your own hands, move the um, Empire State Building in New York. You know, you could just go, I mean, somebody would see that, yeah, just bare hands, go ahead and move it. Well, no, you can't. And yet, people want to try to apply it to the things of the Spirit. <clears throat> and think that they can move and shift and twist and, tr and turn these things. They get frustrated because their human efforts are limited. And so then, they turn to other areas of the Spirit. You know, to the dark side, to try to get some power. To try to move some stuff around. To try to see some action. And, in the end... They do see and experience power, but it's that power is also set up to enslave. That participation of their free will takes them deeper and deeper and deeper into a trap. And they don't get out. They don't get out. You know, it's, it's when you go that path of witchcraft, when you go that path of... of uh, of rebellion when you go that path of doing and, and fulfilling the bidding of, of, the, of the enemy and becoming a human agent of the powers of the second heavens and the manifestation of those dark intentions and those dark plans on the earth and you harvest and, and, uh, and utilize spiritual power to do all of that you my friend are in an extremely dangerous spot and the enemy will keep people wrapped up in there but the, the byproduct of that is only death death for a lot of people including yourself so now, God has given us the way, the truth, the life, Christ Jesus, keys, keys, keys to the kingdom, you know, well, back to Peter, all right, you know, when, when did, when Jesus started talking about keys, okay, what, what was that context, well, Peter, who do you say that I am? Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Blessed art, are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, 
flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father, who is in heaven, has revealed this unto you. You know? I tell you, you are Peter, Petros, little rock, and upon this Petra, upon this rock, this big rock, this big rock, this revelation of who I am, I will build my church. Oh, they didn't teach you that uh, in, uh, <laughs> in Catholicism. Um, no, they, they told you that, that Peter was the first pope, right? And there's a succession of popes. Because upon Peter, who, you know, upon Peter, this succession of, of papal authority is there. Right? Yeah. Uh, oh, what a tangled web we weave. First, we try to deceive, something like that. Um, yeah, no, Peter didn't even stay consistent with being the first pope, if that's the case, because he denied Christ and broke the lineage and broke rank. He broke it right away. God had to reinstate him. He had to... Go round him up. Go bring him back. Um, yeah. No, it's it's upon this big rock. You go check it out. You can do a little word study there. And set yourself free. <laughs> if you're if you're stuck looking to a man uh, and not wanting to um, to break rank, no, go check it out. Upon this rock, this big rock, this Petra, I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. You know, it's, it's, it's this revelation of Christ. And what are gates for? Their gates are there to stop things from moving forward. Gates are there to keep things in and to keep things out. Gates are there to keep things in and keep things out. You know, if you've got a gate for dogs, it's there to keep them in. If you've got a gate, uh, you know, to, to something to keep something out, but it's there as a barrier. It's there as a barrier. The gates of hell will not prevail against my church. The gates of hell cannot stop you once you have the key. They're still going to be there, but the gates will not keep you in. Because you got the key to go out, to leave. The price was paid at the cross for you. The blood price was paid for the remission of your sins and the sins of the whole world taken upon Christ Jesus so that you can now walk in the truth and you can now walk in the revelation of who Christ is and who you are in Christ Jesus. And who you are from an eternal perspective. Here's something to keep in mind. Okay. So we talked a little bit last time about us being projections of our of our higher self, right? Okay, so the scriptures say that we are seated in the heavenly places, right? Right. Okay. So we're seated in heavenly places. So then what are we doing here? Well, here... We are a projection. We are a physical manifestation of our higher selves. Ultimate example of that, Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus, the, the Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. What did he say? I only do what I see my Father doing. I only speak the words that I hear from the Father, right? Right, okay. So, he only did what he saw from the Father, what he heard from the Father. Well, you know, does a... Sh okay. <clears throat> now, Jesus is the light, but I'm just going to use this as an example. Here's another expression of light. If you have a shadow, does your shadow... 
do anything in and of itself. No, it does what the one that is casting the shadow does. So if you, your shadow jumps only if you jump. Your shadow makes certain shapes if you make those shapes. Right? So Jesus is a projection in the earth, the Word made flesh. He only did what he sees the Father doing. He only speaks the words that come from the Father. He is a physical manifestation of a spiritual reality. And you, brother, sister, and the living God, you are too. You are a spiritual, you are a physical representation of a spiritual reality. You have been projected into this realm at such a time as this for an expression of God's purpose and God's plan. Now, what the world wants to do is it wants to cut your shadow off. It wants to steal your shadow. <laughs> it wants to steal your projection. It wants to steal because, you know why? Because you have free will. Even in this paradigm, you still have free will. You still have the expression. You still Because you've been made in the image and the likeness of God. So you still can make a choice. And what the world wants to do is it wants to cut you off from the source and suck you dry. (laughs) But if you are walking with the life and the truth and Christ in you, the hope of glory has been manifest, and you're moving in that, then nothing, no height nor depth, no angel nor demon, nothing in all of creation can take you away. No no power, no principality. Nothing can take you out of the hands of the living God. Nothing can, can, can pull you away from Him because nothing is stronger than Him. All power in heaven and earth is given unto Christ Jesus and He said to us, therefore go, make disciples of all nations. Got to teach. Got to preach. Got to, got, to, got to speak the word. Got to live the truth. Got to be what God made you to be. So that's what we're doing, right? Okay, so, keys. Well, the big one, starting one, the prime, (laughs) is Christ in you. Jesus Christ, I am. There's a key. Because Jesus talked about keys. But you got to start with the big one. You got to start with the one that opens the door where you can go from darkness to life, from the power of Satan unto God. You've got to open the door. The prison door is open in Christ Jesus. Your, your shackles are taken off in Christ Jesus. So now you can go through. You can go in and out and find pasture. You can be in the world and not of the world, as Jesus prayed for his disciples. You need no man to get to God. Yeah, that was the curse of the law. We've talked about this before. The curse of the law was that you needed a man to get to God. That was the old covenant. Under the old covenant, there was the high priest once a year. He'd go in, make sacrifice for the sins of the people and for his own sins and his own mistakes. And they have to put bells on his, on the hem of his garments, tie a rope around his ankle, because if he messed up and God didn't like what was going on, he would drop dead in the Holy of Holies, and they'd have to pull him out by his ankle, because nobody could go in after them, because they would die too. The curse of the law, you constantly, you constantly needed somebody to try to go to God on your behalf. Somebody to try to make this right. Somebody. Are you always wondering, are you okay? Are you okay? Curse of the law. Jesus Christ said it is finished. In Christ Jesus, you need no man to get to God. You don't need a human agent. You have direct access. What happened at the, when Jesus cried at his finish? The veil of the temple was rent in two from top to bottom by the very hand of the living God. 
this is not some flimsy veil. You know, it, it, it's... I mean, the thickness of it, I, I, I think I've talked about this before, but I had a buddy that used to collect Persian rugs. He showed me one. You could see they're two inches thick just with the knots woven by hand. And he just said, just pull it, just tug on it. And I, I mean, it's it was like pulling on a, on a piece of steel. It was so strong. He said, you know, Govinda, he said that the veil of the temple was twice as thick as this. Amazing. But, yeah, God, by his hand, ripped it top to bottom. And so the Holy of Holies was exposed, was opened up. And you could see in to the place that was previously off limits. Jesus Christ was a natural example of a spiritual reality. The temple of God that was built when God gave the instruction to Moses said build it like this why because don't take liberties why because it's a natural example of a spiritual reality and I'm having you do this so that my people can understand something that's going on in the realm of the spirit even if they can only see in the natural they can get an idea they can get a sense okay so the veil of the temple was rent what did that do that meant that now you have direct access. Because the realm of, in the realm of the Spirit, you were no longer blocked. You no longer had a limitation. Now you had a link. You had a connection. You had, the, the way was made for you to boldly go before the throne of grace. And we do. And we do. We boldly go before the throne of grace and we bring our petitions before the living God. <clears throat> and we utilize the keys that God has given us. Now, okay, what do keys do? All right, keys, um, they unlock, they open. They open up something that was previously closed to you. So, in the process of you using it... Now, first of all, you've got to know which key. Uh, you've, got to, you've got to know which key goes to which door. And you've got to be able to use it. So, this is where, too, <coughs> my people perish for lack of knowledge. You know, they, they don't know. And, and they don't also apply what they know. See, now, uh, kind of one of my old sayings was um, knowledge without application is worthless. You can know something, but if you don't apply what you know, it doesn't help. If you don't apply what you know, it does not help. So knowledge without, you've got to have the, you've got to apply what you know, and you've got to have the will and the desire to apply what you know. And you've got to have the power to apply what you know. You know, you can, you can see the solution for all the problems of the world. But if you don't have the platform and the power to be able to do something about it, well, well you know, nothing changes. So you've got to have the power. Okay. But you got to you got to know. You need to know um, which key goes to what. And in the process of knowing which key goes to what, you can apply it. You can use it. So keys to the kingdom. Now, why does the enemy try to hide these keys from you? Well, the enemy tries to hide these keys from you because if you use them, because if you have the keys and you use them, he can't stop you. You know, so all of the propaganda um, of the enemy is to try to keep you away from using the very keys that God has given to you. Because you have them. Okay? Well, first one we discussed is I am, is Christ Jesus, the hope of glory. You know, he he is, he is that first key to be able to go from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God. He is that way out. We talked a little bit about you know another one is is the breath, breathe, <sighs> Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. Yahweh, that there's, there is, now there are people that are, 
you know, that have gotten so much into breath and so much into breathing and so much into, but you can, um, you can shift a lot of things in your body, in your mentality, in your thought process, in all of these, that, that is right there with you. You can balance the pH in your body. You can, you can put yourself in a different state. You can go from stressed to non-stressed just through breath. Jesus breathed on them. You have these are the here's the thing about the keys. Jesus gave them to you, so you go, you have them on you, and you can use them. Um, so now, what do these keys allow you to do? Well, they allow you to be in. You're in present. You're 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 right now. So here's another one. Okay, I am. Being present. You know, why does the enemy try to get you caught up in the past or try to get you all complex about the future? Because he keeps you from using the key of right now. And right now, I am is the only place, time, space that you can do anything. Right now, I am. Be here now. This very present moment. You walk in that. Not in something that's in the future. And not bound by something from your past. You are right now. You are I am. Why is it that the world tries to keep you out of that? Why is it that every time that you are moving forward in something, that then the enemy is going to try to come and uh, and take you off of that? You know, I think a lot of <clears throat> a lot of the thing that's been built into technology, instant notifications, <laughs> for example. Okay, well, what do so many of those do? Well, you're talking to somebody. And then, bing! Now, your mind goes somewhere else. Your thoughts go somewhere else. You can't be where you are because, bing, something's just come up to take you somewhere else. You're not I am. You're, oh, what was that? Distracted. Over here, over there. You know, I think something with technology, small side note, people were given all of this tech and they continue to be given more and more and nobody is told how to use it. They're just given it. And all the spikes in dopamine and all of the all of the psychology that's gone into it, it just it just you know people were just given, you know, a bottle of scotch and a and a huge glass and just told to drink. You know, you got to learn how to use the tools that are around you so that they're tools and that you're not serving them, but they serve you. <coughs> Nobody taught people to do this. So you, you've got to take a little discipline there because sometimes, a lot of times, the design of many of these things is um, in line with the purposes of the world. And a big part of the purposes of the world is to keep you off the track keep you separated from life, to keep you separated from truth, to get you off of I am, to get you away from being an eternal being, and to get you stuck in the past or something in the future. <clears throat> you know, a lot, you, this is, this is again down to the individual, there's going to be some discipline, a disciple is a disciplined person, there's going to be some discipline necessary for you to be able to, um, to shift and to transition. So, um, but yeah, I am right now. In Christ Jesus, you can walk in an eternal state. You can be right now. And you know what? That doesn't end. That, that's, that, that doesn't end. Um, if, you, if you are walking in that truth, if you're walking in that life, then... 
you can walk in that eternal state right now. Now the enemy's going to try to to pull you off of that. So what you've got to do is whenever those things come up, just deal with it in that moment. But stay close to your default spot, which is um, your default is to be eternal. Your default is to walk in eternity. Not to... Uh, your, your default is to walk in eternity, not to walk in um, in something temporal. what I was talking about. The second, the second that uh, <laughs> we start going into these things. Okay, so you got to be eternal. So you got to be present. Um, you know, that's what it is to be like the wind. So the children of God, they're like the wind. They flow to and fro as the, as the uh, Spirit leads them. You know, Jesus talked about um, you know, out of us will flow rivers of living water. Okay, well, water, all right. But what, is, what does water do? Well, water, he also talked about peace I give, with, give to you, my peace I leave with you. Not as the world gives. Okay, well, you know, when I studied that one out some time back, he talked about that word he's talking about, internal serenity amidst external turmoil. Okay. So you can have inside of you a sea of glass, even when the world is coming down all around you, even when everything's up in turmoil and, and turbulence, you can have peace within you. If you've ever seen the, the top of a, of a really, really calm lake, you know, taken a rock, tossed it into that water. But what does that water do? You can toss it into that water and it'll, it'll, it will, it will respond based on what, what it is that you tossed in. If you toss a pebble, okay, it has a pebble response. If you toss in a huge boulder, huge rock, huge whatever, it will have that response. And it'll always go back to its calm state. You, know, you can do that. Because right now, in this very moment, right now, while I'm talking to you, in this absolute moment, what problem do you have? You know, what? No, in this moment. If you think about it, you're fine. If you think about it, God's with you. If you think about it, and you look at it, He's He's got you. So you should take hope. And you need to, to... Now, okay, why do we use these keys? There's more. There's more. Okay, uh, there's... You know, here's one. Love. Love. Okay, well, God is love. So when you're consummated with Him, you're consummated with love. And when you love, things change. When you love, you access something that, you know, was previously a, a totally different loop. When you're unforgiving, when you're bitter, when you're hostile, when you're angry, when you've got that bitter root growing inside of you, just traps you into something that the enemy just is relishing. But when you love, when you forgive, when you release, when you let go, when you love your enemies and you pray for those who persecute you, Pray for those that despitefully use you. <sighs> yeah, it hurts. It hurts. It hurts when people do bad stuff. To us. But when you love and you release and you let go, you're free. And when you're free and you walk in that freedom, um, you experience a different reality. Now, <laughs> with regards to these keys, well, what do they do? Will they allow you? 
to access a different paradigm, a different reality in your present experience. So you're experiencing things right now as an I am, as I am right now. And you're in loops of reality in your experience. Have you ever noticed how certain things just seem to repeat? <laughs> certain patterns just seem to repeat? You know, certain betrayals just seem to happen again and again? Certain things you just go into these loops because we go into loops. We go into repetitive expression based on the loop that we're in. That's the spin we're in. And if you want to step out of that, well, you've been given the keys. You've been given the keys so that you can you can step out. And you can go from one, you can go from glory to glory, from strength to strength. You can shift your entire expression of your experience in this paradigm of what we call life on earth you can you can shift it entirely and God will lead and guide you into all truth and you use the keys as he shows you and those shift the entire expression now <laughs> who's the one that gives us the keys well God gives us the keys so they're going to come from him going to show you how to use them. Oh, it's it's in there. Boy, I tell you, when you start to see this stuff, it, your, your study of the scriptures gets exciting. Because you start to see that which was previously hidden. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You, you've got to have that to start with. <clears throat> if you don't have that, where are you going to go? So... Yeah, we talked about it last time. You know what the world does? Their, their answer to wisdom, knowledge, and understanding is information. That's the way the world goes. They're just going to gather as much information as they possibly can. You know, they're just going to make up for it with inputs. And they're going to turn it over to AI to make the decisions for them because they don't they can't. Machines become God. And human beings, in their patterns and in their loops, in their predictability, just become data sets. Here's the thing about a, of a child of God. A child of God will, um, will shift, will change, because they hold nothing so dear in this life, anything more than um, to follow God to be led by Him. So because they're led by Him, they can shift, they can change. The child of God can change careers on it, just like that. The child of God can change their circles, can change, they can go up, they can go down, they can go sideways, doesn't matter. You know, they can be in the lap of luxury, and they can leave it all, and they can go live in a hut. And then they can go from that and uh, live you know in a palace right afterwards doesn't matter because you know and Paul talked a little bit about that I've, I've learned the secret to be content in all situations in all things in all states I know what it is there you go he appropriated a key he utilized the key and in using that one it opened up an entire set of experiences that worlders can't imagine. Worlders can't go back in their states. As far as their, their expression of their life, you know, they just got to keep, you know, they, they, there's a lot of things that they, they it's just, they're petrified. They're petrified to lose anything that they think they have in this world. So they oppose the truth because, oh my gosh, um, <clears throat> possibility of them losing something that they think they have. It's terrifying to them. But with Christ Jesus, you 
realize everything that you ever had in the world was but dung. And for what you now have in Christ, that's what's real. So that's what we want. We want you want what's real. You want to move with the keys. You want to move with what's with what God has given you. In doing so, in 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 living that, you also now experience. Jesus said, "I came that they might have life and have it more abundantly." You know, the abundant life is the full life. The full life is a life where you can live the fullest expression of what God intended for you to be in your time on the earth. Nothing is off limits to you. No expression of you, the fullness of who you are while you're on the earth is off limits. And God gives you the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding and the power to do what he has for you to do. So, an amazing time to be alive, amazing time to be walking with God and, and the things of the Lord. Trust Him. And know that He that began a good work in you is going to carry it on to completion. So walk in I am. Walk in the truth. There's another one. <laughs> There's the key. Walk in the truth. You'll know the truth. The truth shall set you free. Make you free. Walk in that truth. And know that He's doing it. God is doing it. And so... Um, yeah, no, it's 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 all good, guys. Love you guys. Hey, um, drop us an email, faithmix at gmail.com. Say hi. We always love to hear from you guys. Um, 20 on 20 is coming up, so join us in prayer. Um, you guys already know if you've been listening in on that program, um, you know that the world changes when the people of God come together in agreement to pray. 